Man, listen, man. Jeanne, God, I love them girls, dude. That's one of my favorite 90s R&B groups, man. I, I love their music. I can just listen to their music all day and go right back to where I was in 97 and 96 and 95 as a, as a, as a, as a, in my adolescence, man. It, that music takes me right back to my, you know, right back to that time, man. But, you know, I was riding to that. And I saw Takashi 69 got crashed in a club. Somebody ran up on him and hit him in his shit. God, that'll really put me in high spirits. Anytime I see that, oh man, I want the worst for him. I ain't, oh man, let me stop saying I'm up. Still bills, what's the deal, man? Yo, peep game, man. We gotta, I try to do a video on it. And I forgot that I left out some points, man. But we gotta get into Shakur Stevenson and Oscar Valdez, man. Um, I don't think this fight is going to be as easy as people think, man. They just expecting Shakur Stevenson to go in there and just wash through this dude, and I just don't see that happening. Like they did, like he did Jamel Herring, man. Um, I don't see that happening, man. I, I think uh, Oscar, you know, shout out to Jamel Herring, but I, I think you know Oscar's a, 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 a bit above him. You know, I, I, I'd hate to have to say that about somebody that my. <laughs> that my hometown you know our coaches up here train man but you know and Jamel is nice with it man but I just think Oscar's just just a cut above him you dig and um he has certain dimensions that I think he could throw at Shakur Stevenson to throw a monkey wrench in his game man like the switch hitting it's not immaculate it's not Bud Crawford switch hitting it's not Jerron in his switch hitting it may be I don't even think it's on the level of a Danny Jacobs and the Tyson Fury it may be on the level of a Julio Cesar Martinez, somewhere, someone like that, where it's just like, all right, he's doing it, and it's giving your opponent different looks, but it ain't nothing like he's gonna fight out of out of the southpaw stance for six rounds and then switch back to nah, it's nothing like that, man. But what he did do, he he was able to keep Miguel Burcho off balance, man, and he was you know go southpaw, use the southpaw jab, he go conventional and throw the right straight down. It was just really, he could never, he could never track, uh, 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 um, he could never detect where the right hand was coming from, man. It was either the lead or, 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 the, or, the, or the backhand, man. And um, I think he can use that to his favor. And I think, um, like, I haven't watched the Rob, the, Rob, the Robson fight, man. I thought he should have been reprimanded for that fight. I, I just, you know, the dude was... You know, you get popped dirty, man. You don't get stripped or nothing like that. You get an opportunity to defend the strap. That shit is just kind of egregious. But nonetheless, he defended the strap, whatever the fuck ever with it. I'm more than likely going to watch that fight. So the only thing I can do is go off of the Miguel Burchell fight. And what I saw in the Miguel Burchell fight, this is why it, he was... They knocked him in going into that fight. They like, oh man, he you know, for chilling. Alacron is about to dis dismantle this man. And he went in there and dismantled that man. Now we can say what we want to say. People feel like, oh man, he was weight drained going into that fight. Yeah, yeah, he was past it. That's a possibility, but he went in there and he did the job. And he never looked that spectacular before. I've watched a few of his fights. He wasn't that defensively sound in those fights. He was defensively sound against Miguel Burchell. So I'm just saying, man, like, uh, you know, the last people that um that that doubted him, look at what happened. I thought he got the knockout of the year with that knockout, man. I think um I do I I think um his pressure and his ability because he's already shorter, he's a, his ability to get low and get up under shots and take your straight shots away from you and punish you for it. I think that shit is gonna pay dividends, but. He was doing a lot of lunging, and you know, and he got to a point where he stopped. He, he went away from the jab, and he was just looking to land that left hook. And a lot of times, it wasn't early on; it wasn't landing. So, and Miguel Burchelt is no Shakur Stevenson in any way, shape, or form outside of punching power. There's nothing that he does better than Shakur Stevenson. So, you can't find the left hook on Miguel Burchelt. Now, it didn't take long for him to find it, but the fact of the matter is, it took him a while to find it. You can't find the good book. You can't find that shit on Miguel Burchell. I can only imagine what the likes of a Shakur Stevenson or how you looking like. With the, you know what I'm saying? It's going to be bad. If you don't step in behind the jab, if you go away from the jab and you're just looking to land at home. I think 
Shakur Stevenson and Eddie Ray also know what it is that they're in front of, so they're going to make sure that he doesn't make the mistakes that he was making in front of a Miguel Burchell. So I think it's going to be a lot tougher than what people are thinking. I think it's going to be a lot tougher. People are like literally giving this man no chance. I disagree with that. Shakur Stevenson is, you know, what he said in his fight with the uh, the second fight, his second fight in the bubble where he pitched a stinker. He won the fight clearly, but it was like, yo, this shit was like a bad performance. And what was the reason for that? Say, man, I got hit by that motherfucker. I wasn't trying to get hit by him. So now you have a dude in Oscar Valdez who's fresh off of, a, in my personal opinion, a knockout of the year. And Miguel Burchell, a dude who he was supposed to lose to by a lot of people, by general consensus. And he went out here, he, he outlined that man in chalk. Unless Miguel Burchell can get Shakur Stevenson. And I think, I think, I think, I, why I say, uh, why I say Miguel Burchell, if, if, unless, if Oscar Valdez, I don't I keep saying this man, I keep saying Miguel Burchell, if Oscar Valdez, I think he's going to, I think, I'm not seeing too much into the into the fight where he's gonna he's gonna force Shakur Stevenson to lead and take a step in. I don't see that. I honestly don't see that happening. I see Oscar Valdez staying on the offensive and and really trying to take it to him. I, I see that. And Shakur Stevenson, I think, is eventually gonna pick him apart from outside. But I do think it will be competitive. I think it'll be competitive. I think. Um, I think it'll be competitive in spurts. Nah, not in spurts. I think it's going to be a competitive fight. I keep having back and forth on it. I think it's going to be a competitive fight, man. I think Oscar Valdez is going to get in there. He's going to land some big shots, and he's going to force Shakur to go back on deep. Like, we're not going to – I don't expect to see exchanges. I don't expect to see exchanges. I expect him to fight a smart fight from about around about mid-distance to long range. Not open up with combinations. I think it'll it'll be a few exchanges far in between, and that's where Oscar Valdez is gonna have his success at. But he knows, I, like you know, Jamel Herring isn't the puncher that Oscar Valdez is, and Shakur, and Shakur knows that. So you know, he'll step lightly, and you know, he'll pick his he'll pick his shots from the outside or to about mid range, around about that area. I don't think he's gonna take that step in and open up, but um. I do think it'll be a competitive fight, but I, I see Oscar, not Oscar Valdez, but Shakur Stevenson getting the unanimous decision. Maybe a split decision. Because um, I, I don't, I, I think people, people, the niggas is talking about he's going to go in here and stop Oscar Valdez, bro. Like, this dude fought through a fucking fight. He fought with a fucking broken jaw. Finished the fight. Like, nah, I don't, I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't, I don't see him getting stopped. I don't see him getting stopped. We got, I might, we got to have a little bit more respect for Oscar Valdez, man. The dude is tough. We get it. Everybody wants him to get stopped because he popped dirty. It's understandable, man. All the cheating, and you're already at a, you're already at an advantage with, you know, with the skill set that you have, your ability to go in there and fuck you. You can kill somebody. You know, these kids, you, the smallest boxer in there is capable, more than capable of actually catching an M. So yeah, most definitely, he can go in there. You know, it, it's. it's you don't need to do all the extra shit. Maybe he didn't know. Maybe he did. I'm not too sure. But nonetheless, he should have been punished for it. You know, he, he most definitely should have been punished for that. I get it. And everybody is mad about it. I get it. I understand it. But I don't see no stoppage happening. I don't see Shakur Stevenson accumulating that much, that much, that amount of punishment on him to a point where he's, you know, he's backing away. He's covering himself because he can't see the shots coming. He's not going to be able to see the shots coming, but not to the point where it's like, yo, it, I, they're hurting me. And Nah, I don't think that's going to happen. I think he was a little bit more hungry with Jamel Herring than he was with Oscar Valdez. And even if he is on that level of hunger with Oscar Valdez, I don't see no stoppage happening, man, because he would have to really get in there and sit down on those shots and open up and enter into exchanges. And I think that's the danger zone. As far he could do that with certain fighters, maybe maybe a Roger Gutierrez, but not with no damn Oscar Valdez. I wouldn't suggest that, but I, I think it'll be a competitive fight. I honestly do. I think um, Shakur is gonna really maintain distance, and for the most part, you dig. I'm talking a minute and a half, 
Oscar Valdez is going to spend a minute and a half, or not even, yeah, he's going to spend a minute and a half looking for an entry, looking for a way to close the distance and step in behind the jab without being punished for it. It's going to take him a minute to a minute and a half to do that in each round. And, because you know, Chagor is going to be keeping a jab in his face. Whenever he does take that step in, he's going to be launching that left hand down the pike and it's going to force him to reset. I see that happening a lot, but when Shakur get you know when he does close distance on Shakur, he's gonna go to work. I'm seeing shoe shines. I'm seeing, you know, I'm seeing, you know, he's gonna land. Some, I think he's gonna land some big shots on Shakur Stevenson, man, and it's gonna force Shakur Stevenson to revert back into the defensive fighter that he is, and he's gonna continue. He's gonna be that much more alert to not get hit by Oscar Valdez again. So that's how I see it going, man. I think it's gonna be a real good fight, man. I, I can't wait for it. I really want to see the youngin back in um back in the ring, and I think this is gonna be a way better Oscar Valdez than we got against the Robson fight, because he knows who he's up against. And he don't want to lose that belt. So that's how I'm feeling about it, man. Y'all let me know what y'all think. I'm almost back at the crib, and I'm finna go crash this Chick Fil A, man. Deuces.